Egon has been crowned as his successor. <laughs> so when Rhaenyra Targaryen learned that her rightful throne had been taken over by her half-brother Aegon, she convened a council and sought their counsel and advice. Her husband Daemon wanted her to draw first blood, but Rhaenyra proved to be wiser than that. However, fans are still not able to understand why she chose restraint instead of offense. In this video, we will explore the four possible reasons why Rhaenyra did not attack King's Landing immediately. Let's Dracaris. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. And he chose me as his successor. To defend the realm, not cast it headlong. Number one, she doesn't want to be the Queen of the Ashes. After Sir Eric Cargyle fled King's Landing and came to Dragonstone with a crown once worn by Kings Jaehaerys and Viserys, Daemon Targaryen placed the crown upon her head and proclaimed her Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. She had just lost her infant child because of the grave news of her father's death and that a usurper on the spiky chair that her father had once promised her. When suggested that she should fly her dragons to King's Landing, she talks about her father and how he often said that when dragons went to war, everything burned. Clearly, she has learned from the many lessons and does not want to be the Queen of the Ashes. A similar dilemma was faced by Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones, and she was counseled by those around her, especially Tyrion Lannister, and that she should use restraint in using force. But in the show, Rhaenyra says what she says on her own accord. She is wise enough to understand the meaning of a city burned to the ground. However, Daenerys went ahead with the same anyway. Both the Targaryen women had a similar nature, but I believe the difference in their actions comes from the fact that Rhaenyra was a mother and had the luxury of growing up with a just father. On the other hand, Daenerys was forced to run from one corner of the world to another with no one, but a twisted and cunning brother who practically sold her to a warlord so that he could get the Iron Throne. Rhaenyra was taught otherwise by her father, however in the book it was Lord Corlys Velaryon who counseled restraint and not Rhaenyra. Acknowledge Aegon as king and swear obeisance before the Iron Throne. In exchange, Number two, she was still considering Otto's offer. Being her father's daughter, Rhaenyra does not wish to sit on the Iron Throne at all costs. She believes that the primary duty of a sovereign is to ensure the safety and welfare of their subject. When Lord Bartimus Teltigar asks Rhaenyra if she was considering Otto's terms, she asks as queen, what is my true duty to the realm? Ensuring peace and unity or that I sit the Iron Throne no matter the cost. She truly was her father's daughter. When Otto hailed the dead king as Viserys the Peaceful, it was just to appease the masses that had gathered to witness Aegon's coronation, but Otto had spoken the truth. Despite his many follies, King Viserys had ensured that his realm remained peaceful, and it did not take his wife and her children even a night to undo years of peace and prosperity that Viserys had brought. However, Rhaenyra was smarter than her opponents and was considering giving up the throne simply for the good of the realm. Yes, she changes her ways and means later on, but as of the season 1 finale, she is anything but a tyrant who craves blood. Having said that, she is not being incompetent or inefficient, she is just weighing the several options she has before her. It would be foolish to take an action without understanding the entire picture, the pros and cons, and the repercussions of such action. When dragons flew to war, everything burned. 3. She did not have enough dragons. Yes, it is known, I'll explain that in just a bit, so dragons thrive the best on Dragonstone. The climate and the topography ensures that they grow larger and stronger than the dragons that grow anywhere else, with the exception of Old Valeria, but it was now in ruins. King Aegon II had Sunfire, a beautiful golden beast that was young but battle-ready. Aemond rode the old and battle-hardened Vagar, whose size and strength could not be matched with any living dragon. Aegon's wife, Helena, rode Dreamfire, another she-dragon who was once ridden by Princess Reyna, the sister of King Jaehaerys. And lastly, Prince Daeron Targaryen would ride Tessarion, the dark cobalt-colored dragon with bright copper-colored belly scales. Although Daeron has not appeared in the first season due to time restraints, he is set to appear in the next season. 
How do I know this? Well, the opening credits to the 10th episode confirm that. Also, Helena's twins Jaharis and Jahera also have two dragons, but they are no more than little hatchlings. And as for Helena's third child, Maelor, he only had a dragon egg in the book, so that makes it three or at most four battle-ready dragons on the green side. On the other hand, Rhaenyra rode the she-dragon Cyrax, and her uncle-husband Daemon rode Caraxes, the Bloodworm. Both these beasts were huge and formidable, especially Caraxes, who had been tested in the battle at the Stepstones. So Caraxes was no longer alien to fire and blood. Furthermore, Rhaenyra's children with Laenor were all dragon riders when the Dance of the Dragons started in the books. As for the show, Jacarys rode Vermax and Lucerys rode Arax, who were young dragons but they were swift and agile. Her youngest Valerian son, Joffrey, rode Tyraxis. That's five dragons. Apart from these, Aegon and Viserys, Rhaenyra's children from Daemon, had a small dragon and an egg. So let's not count them. But Prince Princess Rhaenys had the Red Queen Melis, the fearsome yet elegant she dragon. Daemon's daughter, Bela, from Lena Velaryon, had Moondancer, the pale green slender dragon who was growing at an exceptional pace. That's seven and counting. So, apart from these dragons who had riders, Dragonstone had other riderless dragons. Good Queen Alysanne's Silverwing had made its lair on Dragonmont along with Sea Smoke and Vermitor that belonged to Laenor Velaryon and Old King Jaehaerys. Apart from these, there were three wild dragons who had never been ridden. Sheep Stealer, Grey Ghost, and the Ferocious Cannibal lived on the other side of Dragonmont. Although Cannibal and Grey Ghost never got a rider until the end, Sheep Stealer was claimed by a dragon seed named Nettles. So that makes it 13 dragons. Even if we omit the last three, the Blacks had had 10 dragons in total and 7 dragons with riders, and yet Rhaenyra did not want to use her dragons because she was weak after her recent labor. Her three eldest children's lives could not be risked and Bela had not become well accustomed to riding her dragon. That left them with just Meles and Caraxes. That's two against three, and one of these three was Vagar, the metaphorical mother of all dragons alive. Daemon had not thought it through when he suggested that Rhaenyra should use her dragons immediately. Four. Battles are won by armies, not dragons. No matter the number of dragons on Rhaenyra's side, dragons alone cannot win a war and Rhaenyra probably knew it. She could not just storm King's Landing with her dragon even if she had the numbers. She needed men at strategic locations and fleets at across the narrow sea and Blackwater Bay if she wanted to choke King's Landing. If she had managed to lay siege in King's Landing with men and ships, Alicent and Aegon would have been forced to submit and the war would have been won. I mean, if we think about it, Daenerys had three dragons by her side when she returned to Westeros. But that did not mean she won the war. So that was my take on why Rhaenyra did not attack King's Landing immediately after she learned about Aegon's coronation. If you think I've missed something, be kind enough to let me know in the comments.